there are five things to consider about going on long distance rides. And there's been a lot of things written and said over time. The one thing that they forgot or didn't mention was the most important thing, and that's you. Hello everyone, I'm Fletch and uh, I'm here today to talk about uh, the five things you should consider uh, or while you're riding on a long ride or before even. Uh, but before I get into that, let me uh, do a couple of shout outs in the spirit of uh, support MVC. And the first one I'd like to do a shout out to would be Randy T. Bird. Uh, he's got a great channel, uh, he's done quite a lot of uh, reviews and rides as well uh, and I think uh, right now he's moved on to a better editing suite so he's quite happy with it so that he can put out more videos. So please do uh, like and support. Again, I'll put these channels uh, on my cards above uh, and in my description below. Now the second one that I'm going to do a shout out to is to Joy on the Bike. Uh, it's a husband and wife team, uh, although it's the title of the channel is called Joy on the Bike. Uh, I think it's great. Uh, it's a great channel, and you. She has a lot of rides, and uh, she does quite a number of rides with her husband. Uh, she rides a blue oil and I think recently gotten a Royal Enfield so you can actually watch a review on that particular bike Right, so now onto the topic at hand Now all the things that I'm going to be saying or the, the five things that I'm going to be saying uh, seems like no-brainers uh, it seems like something that you would definitely know and to do but you'd be surprised that if you forget about these five things, uh, it can actually affect your ride. Uh, I know that there's been a lot of uh, stuff written and a lot of things being said, most of which covers uh, the maintenance of the motorbike, right? Uh, quite a lot of it covers uh, the gear that you wear uh, in terms of safety, which is good. Uh, but I think not a lot has been said about um, you, the rider and how you have to take care of yourself to make sure that you have uh, a great and safe ride. So the first one is sleep, right? It's obvious. You know, that, that a normal human being needs to get, uh, statistically, between six to seven hours of sleep. And if you don't get that amount of sleep, it's not about being grouchy or, or, or you could just grab a coffee or something. It, it's, it's all about concentration and being at the top of your game being well rested and so forth you know I I'm guilty of uh, that uh, because every time I'm on a long ride or just before a long ride I get excited and uh, I don't get to sleep at the time that I'm supposed to be getting to sleep and what happens is then invariably I get four hours or less of sleep and then throughout the journey I find that I'm a little tired and my endurance level actually reduces which is really not very good right so i think the best thing to do would be to you know take a day off before do all your preparations planning get your bike done up as you need to have done up uh, I'm not talking about maintenance it's going to take a longer time you know pack your luggage before get all your documents ready uh, if you're crossing borders uh, and then when it's time to sleep get to sleep get your seven six to eight hours of sleep don't stinge on that because at the end of the day uh, what we all don't want to admit is that yeah we, we got all the gear we got everything else you know but riding on a road whether it's long distance or like this 
riding uh, with traffic you have to be on the top of your game you have to be aware of your surroundings you have to take care of people who fail to indicate and just change lanes suddenly you know the odd obstruction uh, potholes and what have you so you need to be aware and if you're not sharp enough and you're tired uh, I think a lot of that just reduces your your ability to ride safe and these are really important factors uh, as well right? because not only have an enjoyable trip but have a safe trip now the other thing that is also important or point number two is hydration now where I am it's a tropical country it's hot most of the time it can go up to about 38 degrees centigrade and because it's humid you tend to uh, perspire more right you sweat a lot more and there's a lot of uh, bodily fluids that you lose over the ride I've been guilty also of that uh, uh, not drinking enough water especially at the rest stops right you should because that's the best time for you to uh, fuel up not just your bike but yourself and to be ready for the actual ride now just like anything else loss of fluids means that you get tired easily uh, you will lose your concentration but I think the, the biggest killer of uh, not hydrating is heat stroke right uh, I, I think it's uh, an important thing and even if you say oh you know I'm not in a tropical climate I don't have to hydrate it's cold enough and all that but don't forget that in cold weather you're all bundled up um, and invariably you do lose some bodily fluids as well so I think it's still important no matter what to hydrate and what you shouldn't be doing when you think about hydrating is drinking coffee or tea right this is caffeinated and even say oh did he cap uh, you know basically coffee in whatever form it is or tea actually uh, makes the dehydration worse it makes you more dehydrated so try to avoid it maybe in the morning the first cup you have your first cup of coffee maybe at your first stop but don't forget right after that drink a lot of water I think the, the, the minimum amount of water you should drink is just one of those regular 350 milliliter bottles that you have right buy one or two put it in your luggage put it in your backpack and then at a stop drink it drink it all and if you still feel thirsty grab another one drink some more right? because uh, it will definitely help you out and last but not least after you reach your destination I know I'm also already guilty of it and uh, because of it I almost had a heat stroke you know we stop we get off our bikes we hit the pub and we start drinking our beers or our Guinnesses or our whiskeys or what have you alcohol actually dehydrates you more so at the end of the day if you don't consume some more water have a shower relax for about half an hour or an hour and then drink your beers but don't drink too much of it you know uh, till you really have cooled down and calmed down and so forth so that you don't dehydrate right because ultimately when you dehydrate too much you'll get a heat stroke and you can literally die from that now the third point again may seem like a no-brainer but if you're on a long distance trip and you're doing you're trying to do a thousand kilometers in a day you have to stop to eat have your lunch if you don't feel like having lunch have a sandwich have something light but 
eat something because all this is about the energy that you need right and it's all about being able to concentrate and being at the top of your game because you'll never know uh, how the traffic situation is going to be you cannot assume that it's going to be clear no matter what time you are in the morning or whatever that the traffic will be clear these are assumptions that uh, will ev ev eventually cause problems because then you need to concentrate and if you're not at the top of your game then you have a problem right so make sure that you have if you don't want to have a full meal because you feel that uh, you know you don't want to be full up while you're riding it's uncomfortable and so forth then in your short breaks take something light three or four light meals is better than no meals at all sometimes in the excitement of things or because you're rushing you tend to forget but I think you need to make it clear to your riding buddies that you know if you need to eat you need to eat and if they can't understand that then I think you're in the wrong group of people and those people should be off your list because everybody takes care of everybody else uh, everybody should understand the right things to do point number four is well about gear but not not that it's not important to have safety safety is important but I think what's important is dress for the weather right? In a, in a tropical country like this, uh, long distance rides, I will wear my full riding gear. But my jacket would definitely have a lot of ventilation, not just zips on the side. You need to have ventilations on the front with ventilation off the back so that you have good airflow uh, to be able to keep your body temperature down. Uh, because don't forget that all that heat trapped inside is going to, is going to dehydrate you more. And if the ventilation of your jacket is not good enough, then what I normally do is uh, I went and got uh, a cooling vest. Now, there's a lot of cooling vests out there. Um, I know Harley actually has one as well, um, in which you would soak it and then put it on underneath your jacket so that you can keep your body temperature down. But you know, if you're, if you're not used to it and you, and you don't like the idea of something wet under your jacket, then you get something that I got, which is the Magna cooling vest. And what it is, is that you don't soak it in water. You put water inside. The material of the jacket actually um, allows for... I'm, I'm not sure how, what it is. I'll leave a link anyway below in the description. Uh, of the Magna cooling vest and, and you take a look at, at how the fabric and the, the technology behind it but what it is is that although the water does evaporate a little bit uh, through your journey but because of the wind it literally acts like an air conditioning inside your vest and you really feel very cold very cool not cold cool and the point of it is to reduce the body temperature of your torso so that you have less uh, loss of bodily fluids and the bottom line is to be able to concentrate right because if you're hot and you're dehydrated your concentration level reduces and of course there is an and if you don't want to wear that vest and you still prefer to just wear uh, a t-shirt underneath climb actually has uh, a range called the aggressor cool and what it is is that you soak it in water but you don't feel wet again strange technology i'll leave the, the link below uh, for that particular thing it's called a climb aggressor range uh, long sleeve or short sleeve but i probably suggest short sleeve a uh, long sleeve my friend wears it uh, when he rides his uh, bmw over long distances and he swears by it, it really keeps him cool he feels comfortable to, throughout the entire ride. He's actually cool. Uh, he's not uh, perspiring too much, right? And uh, he still hydrates, but uh, the, it is not like the crazy feeling of really needing some water when you 
to get to your first rest stop. But inversely, cold weather also affects you, right? I think you watch movies and, and you read stuff. If you're cold, your concentration level also drops, right? Uh, I mean, there have been cases where people fall asleep in the cold and actually die. But I'm not saying you do that on the bike, but again, if you're too cold, you'll lose concentration. So wear the right jacket, have the right thermals, um, those, those jackets that have fleece in it will be great. Anything to uh, increase the temperature, you can have heated vests as well. And I, I mentioned the Climb Aggressor. Climb also has uh, the long sleeve range for cold weather. So instead of cooling you down, it actually heats you up. And they have degrees as well. Again, you can take a look uh, in my description and, and take a read. I think it's something to, to think about. Uh, I, I can't attest to it because uh, I've never used it in cold weather. We don't have that uh, situation here. So I think it's something to look out for. So dress for the weather is point number four. If you're hot, get something to help you cool down, keep your body temperature down, cooling vests or what have you, uh, or cooling t-shirts uh, in the case of the climb. And if it's in winter or or autumn, wear jackets that keep you warm, heating vests, the climb aggressor if you have if you can try it out, wear some sleeves and so forth. Right? Because again, heat and cold affects your concentration, which affects the way you ride and your safety as well. Now the last one is I think really the most important one. which is know your limits. We all think that we have uh, a great deal of uh, endurance and we're tough enough to take anything. You know, some of us have been in the army. Uh, we, we, we think that we are Superman and so forth. But you know, hey, that's when you were 18. So if you were younger, I, I guess your endurance would be much better. But when you're like me, slightly more than half a century old, you know, things are not the same anymore. Things don't work the way it used to work, right? So you have to decide. If your absolute limit is riding 200 kilometers before resting, that should be it. But to me, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be reaching your limit. You know, maybe if you feel that 200 is the absolute limit, then do 160. I know there are a lot of times that we ride with uh, the touring range guys with the 22 litre tanks and they can do much more longer distances. And then what happens is that you invariably just want to follow and what happens is that then you reach that particular destination wow. extremely tired and this is going to affect again your endurance take a little time to uh, show you where I am I'm right now at where the airport is on the left hand side is the terminal uh, terminal 3 I think we've even got uh, a hotel which is just straight ahead and that big dome that you see in front of you is a huge mall it's called the jewel and uh, that's where you got just about everything you know, food and beverage outlets, restaurants, uh, cinema, and all the various things you can find in the standard shopping center. Uh, I'm coming up the ramp to the departure uh, area for terminal number two. 
uh, I'm doing this like kind of U-turn to head back home. So as you can see, we're in the middle of, I don't want to mention what, but look at this, empty. Anyway, back to uh, the, the, the topic at hand, uh, which was point number five, know your limits, you know. Don't push yourself too far. And if you feel that whatever they plan uh, and the timing to be able to get to your final destination is something that you can't hack, you just need to let them know. And your buddies, being good buddies, would change their plans to suit everyone, right? Because we cannot be going by uh, the endurance level of uh, the guy who's in special forces to a guy as old as I am. Because then, what's going to happen is that, again, uh, you're going to lose concentration, you're going to be tired. So those were the five things uh, that you need to consider, or the five tips that you need to take note of before going or while you're on a long trip. Again, as I said, it, it seems like no brainers but I think sometimes we tend to forget. And I think it's important that we do take note of these things because any one of these things could cause a problem for you during the ride. Right folks, so do let me know about uh, your thoughts uh, about what's all that I've been saying uh, throughout this trip. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, and if you have something to add, please do add below. Uh, who knows, it could be part two of this particular topic. And if you, this is the first time that you're here and watching my video, uh, thank you very much. I do hope that you enjoyed uh, watching it. So please do leave your comments below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And don't forget the notification bell to let you know when I'm putting out a new video. I hope that you all be safe and have safe rides.